Shall I use this? Yes. Okay. 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 Never mind. I think I've worked. I'll speak up. Sorry about that. Okay. So when I retired just a few years ago now, a number of years ago, I had to make sure I had some way of uh, passing the time, not cutting up the house too much. Uh, even though Freud hadn't retired, so I had the house to myself as of most of the time. Um, and I'm not sure I'd heard of it beforehand before I came across a letter on the Leicester Mercury um, extolling the University of the Third Age, which shortly better know than it is, so it's an opportunity to spread the word a bit. Um, now, one confusing thing is it's not really a university at all. Uh, though it started off that way, perhaps. Uh, the idea started in France in 1971 or thereabouts that I think it was the University of Toulouse thought that they could um, improve, the, well, offer to improve the education of the retired members of the community around about by really extramural lectures. Um, and it, there were no exams or syllabus exactly, so it was just a matter of um, hobby, really, for the sake of those taking part. And this idea spread through France quite widely. And then, by about ten years later, it started going, really going in this country. Um, but the idea quickly uh, evolved, so it wasn't really a matter of professionals from universities going talking to the less educated members of the community. Um, it was more a matter of mutual instruction, leadership. Um, but again, the syllabus wasn't really like university syllabus. Some of those uh, activities were academic, but others um, just pastimes, um, hobbies. Um, so the structure this institution has in England now is there's a, a third age trust, which is an umbrella body over a large number of branches spread around the country. There's one in Leicester, but there's another one in Great Glen, I think, another one in Glenfield. I don't know how widely they're spread, but total membership is about a quarter of a million people. And the third age, well, the idea is, is for people who have passed youth and middle age and reach the next one, um, but there isn't a definite age limit, so anyone who has the time, because they're not at work or have other things that fill up all their time, is welcome to come along. But in practice, they are people of retirement age, perhaps well into it. So in Leicester, uh, the membership of the Leicester branch is 400 odd, but the main activity isn't everyone bidding together. There's a monthly meeting, and a fraction of members turn up for that. And there's some talk on some topic which is hopefully of general interest. But the main activity are all the groups which are of more special interest, which are 70 odd in, in Leicester's case, uh, ranging from learning Welsh. Table tennis, walks, uh, go to the theatre, uh, current affairs, um, <coughs> croquet, um, making videos, um, anything that someone thinks might be an interest other people will share um, is a liberty to form a group and assemble enough people to keep it going. Now it's a very cheap way of passing your time, basically, is an annual subscription, which is at £15 in Leicester's case. But the groups, depending on what they do, might require more expenditure. If there's a big enough group, they'll need to find some place to meet. This small group, because houses will do, if it gets to a dozen or more, that's not going to be practical. It's somewhere else, then some rent's going to be involved. So the members of the group could tribute the rent. And then it depends what else they do. Uh, some of it, like making videos, might require people spending money on their own equipment or some joint equipment. Um, 
table tennis, where well, you might have to buy your own table tennis bet. Uh, uh, croquet, you might have to pay a fee to go and use some croquet lawn somewhere, and so on. But it's not really very expensive, um, because you're not paying any tutor to guide you, it's a matter of mutual guidance. Um, so I said, when I joined, not long after I retired, um, I looked around the groups there were, uh, perhaps I've picked more than I should have done. I think I haven't followed them all, but uh, so at present um, I take part in an architecture group, which when I joined it was one of an architecture group, but because it became more and more popular, it, it's uh, really got beyond being uh, practical in meeting any one meeting place. So it's now split into three separate groups, uh, which are all continuing, I think. Um, philosophy group was not one I joined, and again, that was being popular enough to split into three. Uh, when I first joined, it was about half a dozen, six, seven, eight people used to come to a meeting. Um, for quite some time, several years, I was the only man, um, which gave me the uncomfortable feeling that when I spoke, I was speaking for the entire male sex in their eyes, because it wasn't my intention at all. Um, but since then, uh, it's become uh, mixed genders, so that problem doesn't any longer arise anymore. Um, and the original leader of the group uh, retired, and I took over that role. Um, so each group has a convener who is basically concerned with the organisation. Um, if it's any more than that, it depends on the nature of the group. Now, in the philosophy group, which I am convener of, um, I am the leader of the group, so to speak. That is, um, I usually decide what book we're going to work through and which bit of it we're going to talk about next week, and also perhaps introduce the topic before anyone else gets going. But it's not very really academic, really. We, we pick a topic that starts off in a direction which I try and kick roughly to the point, but it does want, wander about a bit, but people find it. They're intellectually stimulating, even if it's not really a very close study of the text. If the exam to follow at the end of it, we're all going to fail, I think, not having done it seriously enough. But still, it keeps our brains ticking over, and that's the main point. Um, another group, digital photography, um, where we set each other's projects to do, and perhaps some people come along with some expertise to explain. Uh, what else? Sorry. Science, the science group, yes, um, which meets over the road, in fact, uh, at uh, Age UK. Uh, because we're an elderly group, I think we get concessionary rates for hiring the room. Um, again, the idea is pretty mutual there, that uh, people are plotted into coming along with expertise they have to talk about it for a bit. Um, and there are occasional outings to various places. Uh, and this is true of other groups too, so it's not all indoors, it's often uh, going off somewhere. In fact, there's a bus pass group, which I'm not a member of, which, whose sole function is to travel about, mm -hmm. making use of their free bus passes they all have. So it's a, partly a challenge to see what sort of place you can get to and back in a day, allowing for the vagaries of the timetable. So, well, if you're any of a, a loose end, um, <coughs> not much to fill up your time, um, unfortunately, of course, most of you are going to be imprisoned indoors for a few months, aren't you? So uh, most of these groups will be out of bounds for you, though some, I suppose, can communicate over telephone lines instead. But when, you, when you're liberated again, and you not to make use of your time that's in your hands anymore, well, think of you three, perhaps, because it's usually going for short. Okay, enough said about that. <laughs> okay. Any questions? Yeah.